Hello, hello, Magic English 8 here. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they are helping you improve in your English proficiency. If you find them useful, please kindly show your beautiful interaction with my channel through liking the videos, leaving your comments, and sharing them with your friends. And if you still haven't subscribed, please kindly do so. It is useful for my channel. Thank you. Today I am with you with another unit of Interchange 2 a very beautiful book for developing our four skills especially for our speaking with the approach that i am employing so far we have covered nine units of the book and today we are heading for unit 10 i like working with people the grammar of today's unit is not very difficult we use the time for developing our speaking skill instead before starting it let's go and see what overall we are covering today unit 10 i like working with people so main areas that we are covering today are abilities and skills job preferences personality traits beautiful part and careers describing abilities and skills talking about job preferences and describing personality traits and under our grammar focus part which is not very difficult talking about gerunds and short responses in agreement and in disagreement and clauses with because which is very simple okay so snapshot and 21st century skills here we have some questions which ones apply to you can you use technology to find the information you need this is your chance now to pause the video and give your answer to this for example it could be a yes i can use technology to find the information i need because this is what we are doing on a daily basis at school and in university so i think i am good there but i see lots of people who are not good because they are not computer literate especially from the previous generation so in your answer in order to expand your talk you can also talk about the negative side the not side of your talk this way you are ensuring a more comprehensive sample response to your question uh, these tips could be useful for IELTS and TOEFL test takers or any other standardized test that you are going to apply for can you evaluate the information you find because lots of the information these days especially that online is not credible you need to see what is what you need to evaluate that okay so that is also important just one point about the word information you need to know that this word is non-count so and today january 26th it is australia day so happy australia day to all australians it is the day british fleet landed on the uh, island in 1788 and uh, they thought that the land was unoccupied but it was uh, occupied with indigenous people for more than 40,000 years anyway australia day information the word is non-count so you don't say my information are my information is see here it says it is non-count so no plural verb information was not passed you see all the verbs for information are singular showing that it is non-count do you work well with different kinds of people yes or no you can pause the video and give your answer can you communicate with people from different cultures are you good at analyzing and solving problems very important in these days problems of different kinds at work in your relationships in family so you need to understand how to solve the problems how through communication through talking with people and through putting yourself in their shoes empathy understanding their viewpoint also is important can you develop new ideas are you creative do you enjoy learning new things 
like learning new languages that now you're doing and can you teach others how to do things very very important very very important everywhere you are you need to say something to others you need to teach them something if it is with your family with your children or at work first you need to see the problem through their perspective and then try to teach them okay so this is the art of teaching empathy now in this part there is some speaking and i want you to pause the video and give your answer to this it says which of these skills do you think are most important for work or for life why which one is the most important one why i got a sample response for you here which of these skills do you think are more important this is my sample response my suggestion please pause the video and give your answer either before or after my sample response now i say i think the ability to work with different kinds of people is important why because it helps us understand diverse perspectives diverse viewpoints improves communication skills fosters creativity develops creativity through collaboration cooperation and creates a supportive environment where everyone feels valued ultimately finally it leads to stronger relationships and more effective teamwork a very beautiful sample response which was not very long but it covered the answer so the ability to work with different kinds of people the beautiful parts the diverse perspectives it means different viewpoints foster creativity develop or improve creativity and ultimately instead of finally lastly so this was one sample response another one the ability to analyze and solve problems i feel the ability to analyze and solve problems is important because it helps us navigate life's challenges effectively mm -hmm. so navigate go through by understanding problems and finding solutions we can overcome obstacles beautiful means solve problems achieve goals lots of beautiful collocations and grow as individuals problem solving skills are essential for success in various aspects of life including such as academics work and personal relationships lots of points here i need to tell you academic without the final s is adjective academics with the final s is a noun so that's why it says academics noun work noun and relationships noun parallel structure here it says by understanding these problems we can if you omit this by even the sample response will be more beautiful a reduced adverb clause understanding problems and finding solutions we can overcome obstacles so a reduced adverb clause which i will talk about in my playlist advanced english grammar and covering the book communicate what you mean and the third response i guess the ability to use technology to find the information you need is important why because it helps you learn about diverse topics efficiently stay updated with current events and connect with people worldwide additionally moreover it enhances problem solving it increases it boosts problem solving skills and fosters a sense of independence in seeking knowledge so it helps you develop that feeling that yay i can do that on my own seeking knowledge or searching information so these were my sample responses to these three qualities to these three skills please read them over and over pause the video and give your sample response and also try to implement the things that are new in your sample responses these parts that i made bold the collocations they are very useful try to use them and little by little you see oh 
that is mine. I can use that in my sample response effectively and efficiently, okay? Now, part one finished, let's move to conversation exercise two. As usual, we want to have some speaking before listening to the conversation. Please do not look at this text, just look at the picture and tell me what you see in the picture. Pause the video and say, try to speak for 25 seconds. My sample response, I can see a young boy and a girl. I think they are in their early 20s. They are both good looking and I think they are students. Probably they are classmates. They seem to be at a cafe or I don't know, maybe in one of their houses. Uh, they seem to be working on an assignment or doing something education wise. This is my understanding from this picture. So you can also give your own sample responses in order to activate your speaking. And here I got some focus questions for you. Which two jobs do they talk about? So they are talking about jobs. Why is May interested in working at, in a restaurant? So these two focus questions. Ready? Listen, take notes, and answer these questions. Let's go. Unit 10. I like working with people. Page 64. Exercise 2. Conversation. I love playing video games. Part A. Listen and practice. What are you doing this summer? Nothing much. I'm broke. I need to find a job. So do I. Have you seen anything interesting? No, not yet. Why don't you get a job at your uncle's restaurant? No way. They're open evenings and weekends, and I hate working on weekends. Well, I don't mind working on weekends. Besides, I really enjoy working with people. Do you think he would give me a job? Why don't you go over this weekend and talk to him? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I found one for you. Video game tester. That sounds like fun. I love playing video games. I'll check that one out. Okay, you got it. So, two jobs that they were talking about. What were they? One of them was working in restaurants and the other one was a video game tester. And why is May, the girl, interested in working in a restaurant? Because she likes talking to people she likes working with other people and uh, that's why she likes working in the restaurant okay that was good the first time we listened to develop our listening skill now a second time looking at the conversation and uh, listening to it again okay listen please love playing video games what are you doing this summer nothing much i'm broke i need to find a job so do I. Have you seen anything interesting? No, not yet. Why don't you get a job at your uncle's restaurant? No way. They're open evenings and weekends, and I hate working on weekends. Well, I don't mind working on weekends. Besides, I really enjoy working with people. Do you think he would give me a job? Why don't you go over this weekend and talk to him? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I found one for you. Video game tester. That sounds like fun. I love playing video games. I'll check that one out. Got it? Okay, very good. Now, a third time, let's listen to the conversation talking about its important language points. Games. Part A. What are you doing? Listen and practice. What are you doing this summer? Nothing much. I'm broke. So what are you doing? Nothing much. I'm broke. I'm broke means moneyless. I don't have any money. So I'm broke. I don't have any money. I need to find a job. So do I. Interesting. Jeff says, I need to find a job. She wants to say, I need to find a job too. She says, so do I. This is the grammar that we are going to cover in exercise 3, I will tell you about it. Sentences, short answers, in agreement. 
Have you seen anything interesting? Have you seen anything interesting? Present perfect. Red interchange unit ten. Have you seen anything interesting? No, not yet. Why don't you get a job at your uncle's restaurant? Why don't you? Talking about suggestions. So, if you want to give a suggestion, you can go with "Why don't you?" Why don't you get a job at your uncle's restaurant? No way. No way. For whatever problem he sees, he says, "No way." They're open evenings and weekends, and I hate working on weekends. So that is the problem. He hates working on weekends. Gerund form, which is a verb ing after hate, hate, gerund. Well, I don't mind working on weekends. I don't mind working on weekends. I don't mind means I don't have any problem with, and after that again gerund. So after I don't mind after mind verb ing. I don't mind working on weekends, and for days of the week you see on. Besides, I really enjoy working with people. Besides, we got two words. One of them is besides with a final s, and the other one is beside. So besides, which is an adverb, and beside, which is a preposition. So beside means next to, but besides means moreover, in addition. Furthermore, so I have one video on my YouTube talking about besides, moreover, in addition, furthermore, and that is in my. Let me show you where that is. Here you come playlist, and that is advanced English grammar. So we come here, and this is conjunctive adverbs. Conjunctive adverbs of addition, and that is video nine. A very useful one. A very useful one for those aiming high scores in IELTS, TOEFL, or any other standardized test. Anyway, going back. Do you think he would give me a job? Do you think he would give me a job? Why don't you go over this weekend and talk to him? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I found one for you, video game tester. Oh, such a nice job. That sounds like fun. I love playing video games. I'll check that one out. I'll check that one out. Check out. I will look into that. I'll check that one out. I will take a look at that. I will see it. Okay, the conversation was not very difficult. It did not have that much. Language to talk about, but part B. Let's listen and see what it is. Okay, two times we will listen. The first time, please take notes. Give me a summary to develop your speaking. Okay, let's go. Page sixty-four, exercise two, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What is one problem with the job? What does Jeff decide to do? So one problem. The job has got one problem, but what does he decide to do? What do they say about the job? Let's see. You must have experience using different devices and platforms, because you have to test the games to see if there are any bugs, and you need to be able to work well with a team. That's no problem. Look, it says that sometimes you may need to work overtime and on weekends. Well. That is a problem, but the pay is really good, and I think you'd enjoy it. You've got a point. I guess it is an interesting opportunity. Yeah, I'll apply for it. Got it. Good. Please give me a summary of what you listened to. My summary. <clears throat> so. For the job, he needs to have experience using different devices. Sometimes he needs to find out the bugs with the system, and、uh, that is kind of thing that he is good at. But the problem is that sometimes he needs to work late and maybe on weekends. But the good point about it is the pay is good. So after weighing the options up, he decides to apply for the job. Okay, this is a simple summary for the part. Now. 
Even if you could not give the summary before me, please pause the video now and based on what I said, you also repeat your sample response. Now a second time, let's listen to it. The job. What does Jeff decide to do? What do they say about the job? Let's see. You must have experience using different devices and platforms. You must have experience using different devices and platforms. Because you have to test the games to see if there are any bugs. You have to test the games to see if there are any bugs. So what is a bug in the language of computer? It means a problem. Mm -hmm. So I know that you know the primary meaning of bug as an insect, but here in the language of computer and software, it means, so basically it means small insect, but this one, a fault in a system. Mm -hmm. So that is the story of bug in the language of computer specialists. Let's listen. And you need to be able to work well with a team. You need to be able to work with a team. That's no problem. Look, it says that sometimes you may need to work overtime and on weekends. You need to work overtime and on weekends. Well, that is a problem. But the pay is really good. And I think you'd enjoy it. You've got a point. You've got a point. You're right. You've got a point. So I agree with you. You've got a point. You've got a point. I agree with you. I guess it is an interesting opportunity. Yeah, I'll apply for it. I'll apply for it. Okay, good for you and good luck. So, exercise two, beautifully finished. And now, exercise three, grammar focus. Very simple, my friends. Gerunds and short responses in agreement or in disagreement. We got some verbs which need a gerund. Firstly, gerund means verb ing. Some verbs need a gerund after them. For example, love. I love playing. Of course, you can say I love to play. I hate working. I'm good at solving. After any preposition, which are in, at, on, next to, beside, whatever. After any preposition, your verb is in gerund form. Or mind, gerund. I don't mind working. I'm not good at selling. I can't stand. Again, after can't stand, verb ing. So, firstly, memorize after these verbs. We need a gerund form of the verb. This is the first important point. And the second one is the responses. So, A says, I love playing video games. B wants to say, I love playing video games too. But simpler than that, easily can say, so do I. Why do? So the structure is so, and then the question word, and then the subject. Why do? Because if I want to make a question out of it, I should say, do you love? So do I. I hate. Again, do you hate? So do I. I am. So the question is, am I? So am I. You see? I don't mind. Here the story changes. It is with negative statements. If you got a positive or affirmative statement, it is so and then the question word and then the subject. If you got a negative statement for agreement, again, we have neither and then the same structure, question word and then the subject. I don't mind working, neither do I. I'm not good at, neither am I, which means I am not good at selling either. I can't stand, can you stand? So, neither can I. Whatever the question word is, you use it with so and you use it with neither. Is there any difference between these two? No, both of them are for agreement. The only thing is that this one comes for positive, this one comes for negative statements. And if you disagree, you can simply use your own language. I love playing video games. Oh, I don't. Really? 
I like it. For example, this one says, I hate. Oh, really? I like it. I'm good at. Oh, I'm not. So this part is not difficult. I don't mind working. Oh, I do. Means I have a problem with it. I'm not good at selling. Well, I am. I can't stand. Oh, I don't mind it. Oh, I'm fine with it. Oh, it's good for me. Or any other thing that you can use. So, to wrap up, after some verbs, we need a gerund form. We need to memorize them. For agreement in positive sentences, so question word and subject. For agreement in negative sentences, neither question word and subject. Okay, this is for agreement. I hope you got it. Did you? Let's go to part A, matching these sentences together. Numbers 1 to 8 and A to H. So pause the video here and match them. Then we will continue. Okay, <clears throat> now here. It says, I can't stand, for example, working the night shift. I can't stand working alone, means I don't like it. Can't stand means don't like. I can't stand sitting in long meetings, yeah. Any of them you can choose, but my suggestion, a little talk about it. For example, I can't stand sitting on in long meetings because it's boring and just some people are talking, you gotta listen to them <laughs> as the picture shows, I guess it is a long meeting with a big yawn on his face. Number two, I'm not very good at solving other people's problems because I don't have enough experience and usually my friends coming to me for advice, I'm not good at giving them advice. A simple sample response. I'm not good at speaking in public because it gives me some anxiety and I need to do something about it because I have a lot of skills and talents but when it comes to performing before public I have some problems. Hmm? If you find it a problem in you, speak in public, do something about it. It is important. I am good at, for example, <clears throat> managing my time because I always think about the things I need to do the day after and plan for the things I need to do. I sometimes write them down on my phone. Or any other sample response here coming to your mind. Got it? I hope there is no problem with this part. Now, as some grammar exercise, I got some questions for you. Please answer these sentences in agreement. So when I say answer in agreement, it means use these. If it is positive, so. If the sentence is negative, neither. Okay, let's go. It says, I watch movies every weekend. So, it is positive, it should be so. And the question form is do. Good, so it is, so do I. I watch movies, so do I. I'm reading a book right now. Present continuous. This one was simple present. This one is present continuous. I have tried to ensure that we got different uh, verb tenses. I am, so am I. I have visited Paris before. Present, perfect. So it should be, so have I. Good. So have I. I've been studying English for two years and still I haven't made enough progress. Present. Perfect. Continuous. So it should be. So have I. I visited. Simple past. I visited my grandparents last week. Last weekend. It should be. So did I. Because the question form for that is did. I was w cooking. So, past progressive. I was cooking dinner when you called. So, was I. I had finished. Past perfect. I had finished my homework before dinner. So, past perfect. Had pp. Something happens 
in past before something else had pp i had finished so had i which one i had been waiting for you for an hour before they called for example past perfect progressive which is not a useful verb tense but i just wanted to bring it here for you to show that the formula is the same so had i i will it will be so will i i will go to the gym tomorrow oh really so will i i will be studying all day tomorrow future continues so will i again i don't eat spicy food negative senses come up neither do i i'm not watching tv right now neither am i i haven't visited europe yet present perfect neither have i i didn't go to the party last night neither did i i wasn't listening to music when you called neither was i i hadn't finished my homework by the time you arrived neither had i i won't which means will not i won't go to the concert next weekend oh really neither will i means i won't go either i won't be attending future continuous but in negative form so neither will i i won't have completed future perfect i won't have completed the project by tomorrow neither again will i because the question is will you and i haven't been exercising neither have i whatever the question form is so or neither okay i hope you got the grammar and i hope it doesn't pose that much of a problem for you if you are good let's go to exercise four pronunciation unreleased and released t and d so here we got a list of some sentences under unreleased t and d and released t and d what does it mean basically unreleased means it is not pronounced strongly released means it is pronounced strongly you can here understand there is a t sound but here you cannot understand a t sound why why unreleased t and d means after them we got a consonant sound released means after t and d sound we have a vowel sound so vowels e a i o u sounds and the rest of the alphabet is consonant now listen to the part you might better understand what i just told you page page 65 exercise 4 pronunciation unreleased and released t and d part a listen and practice Notice that when the sound t or d at the end of a word is followed by a consonant, it's unreleased. When it is followed by a vowel sound, it's released. Unreleased. She's not good at dealing with stress. She's not good at dealing with stress. So, normally nobody says she's not good at dealing with it's difficult she's not good she's not good she's not good at dealing with stress unreleased t sound means it is not that strongly pronounced i hate working on sundays see i hate working it's not i hate working i hate working on sundays you need to manage money well you need to need to. so kind of t goes into need and you need to you need to manage money well but look at the released ones 
released. He's not a good artist. He's not a good. See, t is strongly pronounced. It's not possible to say he's not a good. He's not a good. They really hate it. They really hate it. Hate it. I need a cup of coffee. I need a cup of coffee. So here, understanding the released, unreleased, in the can help you with your listening exercises as well. Okay? I hope there's no problem here. Given that, let's move to exercise 5 and speaking. Do what you love. Do you enjoy doing these things? You don't mind it means it's okay, no problem. So I am in it's it's not a problem for me and I hate it. So the extremes are this and this and this one falls halfway in the middle. Now, please you speak here. Dealing with the public. Do you enjoy it? Do you hate it? Or you don't mind it? Working alone. Enjoy, hate, or don't mind. So what does it mean? Dealing with the public means uh, to be with public means not being alone so I enjoy dealing with the public why because I think that humans are sociable creatures and they cannot live alone therefore I myself whenever I am doing something with others I do enjoy it so this is a sample response very short and beautiful so you can copy it for your IELTS sample response part one it just needs four fast fluent sentences coming to support the question or for example being part of a team do you enjoy it you don't like it or you don't mind it meeting deadlines so if there is some deadlines i need to meet it i need to satisfy it i if i want to give response to this one meeting deadlines is always stressful for me and I don't like it at all. I would like to have something that does not have tight deadlines and uh, it's not possible surely. So whenever I have some deadlines, I try to ensure wise planning for it. Okay, a sample response for this one. Leading a team, working on weekends. For example, a sample response for working on weekends. Generally, I don't like working on weekends because I feel weekends are time for being with family members. But depending on the pay, if the pay is good, I don't mind working on weekends either. And uh, doing the same thing every day. <laughs> okay, surely no one likes it. So my response, I don't like doing the same thing every day because it's quite boring and tedious for me repeating what I do every day doing the same thing every day I am sure that I will feel bored and will quit very quickly that's not my cup of tea at all and uh, traveling making decisions and helping people or solving problems so here you can pause the video and like what I did give your sample response to these parts they could contribute to your fluency and your speaking okay and if no problem we move to exercise 6 and listening my ideal career so just a bit about the pronunciation of this word don't confuse it with something else this one is career with the stress on the second syllable and this one is carrier this one is carrier so carrier is someone who carries with the stress on the first syllable but this one is career with the stress on the second syllable which means your job your profession okay now let's listen and see what it is okay let's go page 66 Exercise 6. Listening. My ideal career. Part A. Listen to people talk about the kind of work they are looking for. Then check each person's ideal job. 
So for the first time, we are listening to it non-stop. Please take notes. Give me your summary. One, Alex. What kind of job do I have in mind? Well, I don't want a regular nine to five job. And eventually, I'd like to work for myself. I'm good at drawing, and I think it would be fun to design people's homes and businesses. I've actually been reading blogs about designing, and I'm looking into programs at universities. That sounds great. Have you tried designing anything? Well, yes. I've actually done some drawings recently of my dream house. Would you like to see them? Definitely. Interesting. So, pause the video and give me your summary of this talk. My summary, Alex is good at drawing and especially he, he likes to design houses for people. In fact, he has done some sketch before. So based on what he says, it seems that the perfect job for him is architect. Okay. We will listen to the part a second time later. Number two, listen, take notes, summary. Two, Evelyn. What kind of career are you planning for yourself? I don't know. I think I'd like to have a job where I can help people. Everybody else in my family is in business. And I'm not good at selling or negotiating. It's just not for me. I know I'd love working overseas, though. Maybe in a children's hospital in a developing country. But that's a long way away. I have to get into medical school first, and that's not going to be easy. Evelyn, the perfect job for her seems to be doctor. Why? Because she enjoys helping people. And uh, the type of thing that she's not good at is selling and negotiating. That's what most of the family members are in. So for her dream to help people, especially people, for example, children in developing countries or the countries in need, she needs to go to medical school first. She knows it's difficult and that's a long way, but she likes to do it. And number three, Edward. Three, Edward. So what kind of job are you looking for? Well, I haven't made up my mind. I enjoy working with people and I love traveling. I don't want a job where I'm stuck in an office all day. Are you interested in working in business? That's where you can sometimes make good money. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money at this point in my life. I just want to get out and see the world. I'll worry about money later. And what about Edward? It seems that the best job for him is flight attendant. Why? Because he loves traveling and he loves to see the world at this point of his life. For him, based on what he says, making a lot of money at this point of his life is not that much of a priority. And so he doesn't like also to be stuck in an office. All of this tells us that flight attendant is the best pick for him. Got it? Let's listen to the part a second time talking about the beautiful language it's got. My ideal, ideal job. One, Alex. What kind of job do I have in mind? What kind of job do I have in mind? Well, I don't want a regular 9 to 5 job. I don't want a regular 9 to 5 job. A regular 9 to 5 job. So what is a 9 to 5 job? It is the job that you're working for a company. It is the job that you're working for the government because most of the jobs depending on the country, start at 9 and finish at 5. I know in some countries the story is different, but 9 to 5 job means a regular job which you are working for a company or for the government. Even though, even though working hours could be different in some other countries. I know that, for example, in Iran, banks open much earlier at 7 o'clock and they finish at 1.30. So still it is called a 9 to 5 job. It's not called a 7 to 130 job. Okay? And eventually, I'd like to work for myself. Eventually. Eventually. Finally. I'm good at drawing. I'm good at I'm good at I'm good at I'm good at drawing. 
I'm good at drawing, so be good at something. And I think it would be fun to design people's homes and businesses. I've actually been reading blogs about designing. I've actually been reading present perfect progressive. I've actually been reading. And I'm looking into programs at universities. That sounds great. Have you tried designing anything? Well, yes. I've actually done some drawings recently of my. I've actually done designing so present perfect again. Dream house. Would you like to see them? Definitely. Two, Evelyn. What kind of career are you planning for yourself? I don't know. I think I'd like to have a job where I can help people. So a job where I can help people. Everybody else in my family is in business, and I'm not good at selling or negotiating. I'm not good at selling or negotiating. It's just not for me. I know I'd love working overseas, though. I like working overseas, though. So what is though here? I like working over overseas, though. What is this final though? It means but. It is subordinate in conjunction of contrast. I have a video on though, although, even though, while, in spite of the fact that, and that is under advanced English grammar. You can go in, check that out. So it means but. Like working overseas though, overseas means abroad, out of my country. It's just not for me. I know I'd love working overseas, though.、Mm -hmm. Maybe in a children's hospital in a developing country, but that's a long way away. That's a long way away. I have to get into medical school first, and that's not going to be easy. Yeah, medical school. Surely that's difficult. And number three. Three, Edward. So, what kind of job are you looking for? Well. I haven't made up my mind. I enjoy working with people. I haven't made up my mind. I haven't made up my mind. I haven't made up my mind means I haven't decided about it. So make up your mind means decide about it. Make up your mind means decide. I haven't made up my mind. I haven't thought about it. And I love traveling. I don't want a job where I'm stuck in an office all day. I don't like a job where I'm stuck in an office all day.、Mm -hmm. I'm stuck in an office. Hey, are you interested in working in business? That's where you can sometimes make good money.、Mm -hmm. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money at this point in my life. Interesting. I'm not interested in making a lot of money at this point of my life. I I just want to get out and see the world. Good. I'll worry about money later. I'll worry about money later. It's interesting. It's interesting. Some people want to live the moment. It's good. Yeah. So that was the part we listened to it and we had it as a language practice. And now, if no problem, we go to. Exercise eight: Word power. Talking about personality traits, which means personality features, or the adjectives talking about our personality. A list of some personality traits here. All of them adjectives. Some of them with positive connotation. Some of them with negative connotation. My suggestion: Please pause the video and first read the words to check your pronunciation. Now I read. You please repeat. Creative, critical, disorganized, efficient, forgetful, generous, hardworking, impatient, level-headed, moody, punctual, reliable, short-tempered, strict. Okay. You got the pronunciations right. Good. Now let's see what each word means and decide if it is positive or negative. Creative. Surely it is positive. Creative. Someone who can think of new ideas. Creative. And the noun for that? Creativity. Critical. 
So it has something to do with criticize, critics. So it means talking negatively about, yeah, critical is something negative. Let's take a look at our longman. Studying without your dictionary on is just a waste of time. Critical, it's not, uh, it's meaning one. If you're critical, you criticize. Mm -hmm. So critical, someone who criticizes all the time. It is negative. Disorganized, organized, disorganized, messy. So it is negative again. Efficient, someone who does not waste time and resources. In a certain amount of time, person A can do 40% of the job, person B can do 60% of the job. So the efficiency of that person is higher. Means not wasting time, not wasting resources. Efficient, an adjective and the noun for that, efficiency. Forgetful, forget the verb, forgetful, adjective. So all the time forgetting things. Grandpa has gotten forgetful these days. Mm -hmm. So forgetful, negative, but sometimes inevitable. Generous, someone who spends money like water. So generous. And it's not just about money. Someone who just gives everything freely, like free comments beautiful comments, generous. Generous, positive, opposite of that, stingy. I will tell you about that later. Hardworking, maybe positive, hardworking. It means someone who is not lazy, so you would classify it as positive. But if you are too much hardworking, you are forgetting about your life and family. And uh, okay, we can say it is positive. Impatient, Opposite of patient, so it is negative. And the noun for that, impatience. Level-headed, level-headed. Positive or negative? Positive. And what does that mean? Level-headed. Level-headed. Calm and sensible in making judgments. Opposite of that, hot-headed level-headed so someone who is calm someone who can make good decisions wise decisions is called level-headed moody today happy tomorrow unhappy the day after angry so you cannot rely on them you don't see exactly what the problem with them is moody changing from time to time negative and badly negative Temperamental. Synonym for that is temperamental. Someone whose temper changes frequently. Yeah? Temperamental. With the stress on T. Temperamental. Temperamental. Mm -hmm. Suddenly becomes upset, excited, angry. Mm -hmm. So, a very beautiful animation which can tell you why people sometimes feel happy or sad or whatever is, let me show you, oh beautiful Persepolis, Inside Out, the animation telling you why sometimes you feel this way, sometimes you feel that way. It is something up there in your mind. It's a very beautiful animation. It is a must-see. It's not an animation. It is a book for you to read in visual form. Do watch it. Do watch it inside out. Okay, <clears throat> going back to our story. Punctual, on time. Punctual, on time. Opposite of that, impunctual. Reliable, someone you can rely on their decisions, whatever they say, your promises. Short-tempered, someone who is impatient. Short-tempered, negative. Short-tempered, they become angry very quickly. Mm -hmm. Short-tempered, she gets... She gets short-tempered when she's tired. Mm-hmm. So very quickly they lose their mind. 
short-tempered. And strict, which is negative, means someone who has very high disciplines, they do not laugh, and things are difficult with them, yeah? Strict. Strict. Someone who is not easy going. It's difficult to work with them, yeah? Strict. Okay, so these were some personality traits to describe people. Now, what is your job? To pause the video and talk about the things you find in yourself. For example, you say, I think I am creative because of this. And I think I am also efficient and generous. Why do I think I am efficient? Because most of the time I do things much faster than the other people. So I think I don't waste time and resources and I am generous. I always enjoy giving presents to my friends and family members. And in return, I don't expect anything to come back. I am generous. But the problem in me, I think I am somehow short tempered. So very easily. I start to get angry when things are not the way I want. I think I should do something about it. So this is your sample response for these personality traits in order to talk about yourself. Okay. <clears throat> now, before we continue here, I got something beautiful for you. A list of some useful personality traits. I liked it and I wanted to share it with you. It is in another video I have on my playlist for listening tactics for listening basic. So here I wanted to share it with you as well. Some words, they would be useful for you. Adventurous, someone who is risky and looking for adventure. Ambitious, people with high, per high standards. They want to go higher and higher. Bright, which means intelligent. Cheerful, means happy. Confident, you know what it is. Cooperative, someone who likes working with others. Cooperation, courageous, means brave curious and curious with lots of questions in mind dependable reliable you can rely on their <clears throat> promises determined means they have decided their mind to do something they are determined easy going opposite of strict and energetic energetic youthful faithful you know <clears throat> they are always with one person they are always with one brand they are loyal friendly fun and funny what is the difference if someone is fun you enjoy being with them if someone is funny they make you laugh they tell you good jokes so he's fun means we have a good time being with him maybe necessarily he is not very funny but it's good the time we are with him but funny tells jokes and things. Generous, we talked about it. Honest, doesn't tell lies. Honorable, someone with high moral values. Humorous, funny, lively, energetic and active. Mysterious, with lots of questions. Obedient, obedient, someone who follows what others say. Obedient. Original, someone who has their own opinions. Doesn't follow others original outgoing sociable doesn't want to be alone rational logical reliable dependable responsible a very good personality trait sensible logical wise decisions sensible stingy opposite of generous doesn't want to spend thankful so you do some something for them they thank you they realize it. They appreciate the beauty of what you did for them. Thankful. Trustworthy. You can trust them. Understanding. They understand other, others' points of views. Warm. Wordy. Talks a lot. Has long sentences. Youth, youthful. So, youthful means to be young. Despite the age, it doesn't matter how old you are. You are young. Your personality is young. So you are youthful. Okay, so a list of some personality traits for you to transfer to your vocabulary list. And now in part B, speaking practice, which of these personality traits, which of the positive ones do you find in yourself? Please explain. Like what we did before, but here I got a sample response for you. 
I think my positive traits are efficiency and reliability. Why? Because I prioritize completing tasks accurately and on time. I will read the part again for you. Additionally, I believe being level-headed helps me remain calm under pressure, ensuring I make thoughtful decisions. While I can be critical of my work to improve, I am also creative in finding solutions. These qualities contribute to my overall effectiveness as a learner. So the sample response is from a learner. One more time talking about the beautiful parts. I think my positive traits are efficiency and reliability. We talked about it. Prioritize means put something before others, means put it first. I prioritize completing tasks accurately and on time. So it means finishing things accurately, means without mistakes, and on time are my first options, are very important to me. So instead of saying are very important to me, it says I prioritize this and that. Additionally, also, I believe being level-headed helps me remain calm under pressure, which ensures reduced adjective clause, ensuring I make thoughtful decisions, thoughtful decisions, a beautiful collocation, while I can be critical of my work to improve, I'm also creative in finding solutions. These qualities contribute to help me contribute to my overall effectiveness as a learner. So positive features and now negative. Which of the negative traits do you find in yourself? What do you want to do for that? Mm -hmm. So these are beautiful questions for you to answer. Please pause the video and give your sample responses here as well. Now it says, <clears throat> I think my negative traits are forgetfulness and impatience. So I forget things and I'm not patient enough. As because I often overlook, don't pay attention to, I often overlook details and struggle with waiting. So the person is forgetful, so overlooks details, doesn't pay attention to details. Struggle with waiting means I don't find it easy. I'm not good at, I have a problem with waiting. So impatient to change that. I need to cultivate better organizational habits like setting reminders and creating to-do lists while also practicing patience through mindfulness exercises or engaging in activities that promote relaxation and perspective taking. Wow! Follow words. One more time, I need to read it for you. I think my negative traits are forgetfulness and impatience as I often overlook details and struggle with waiting. To change that, I need to cultivate so it says cultivate this habit i need to cultivate organizational habits it means i need to see it in myself that i am more organized i need to implement it i need to grow it in me like setting reminders and creating to-do lists while also participating while also practicing patience through mindfulness exercises, mm -hmm. paying attention to all aspects of the thing, or engaging in activities that promote relaxation, that increase or contribute to relaxation, and perspective taking. What is perspective taking? It means you put yourself in other person's shoes. It means empathy. If you want to be understanding of others, if you want to see why they are behaving this way, you need to be perspective taking. So I always find it difficult to talk to that person. So you need to change your viewpoint. Put yourself in their shoes, perspective taking, and understand why. Okay, so these were my sample responses to the speaking part. And now, part C, 
Listen to four conversations. Let's listen. Page, page 67. Exercise 8. Word power. Personality traits. Part C. Listen to four conversations. Then check the adjective that best describes each person. Okay. Just take notes, please, and give me a summary of the part. We will listen to it a second time. 1. A boss. How do you like your new boss? She's okay. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. What do you mean? Oh, she never enjoys a joke. She never laughs. It's hard to even get a smile out of her. Difficult boss. Difficult boss. So please pause the video and talk about it. The boss he is talking about is very serious. She never laughs and it's difficult to get a smile out of her. So she needs to lie down a little. Serious she is. Number two. Two. A co-worker. Look what Mary gave me. Isn't this a great book? Yeah, it is. Mary's so sweet. She's always giving her friends and co-workers presents. And she's so helpful with her time. Good Mary. Good Mary. She's generous. Because she enjoys giving presents to her co-workers. And she's so generous with her time as well. She puts time for others as well. Number three. Three. A teacher. What do you think of the new French teacher? Well, she's kind of strange. She's happy one minute, and the next minute she's not. So the new French teacher, she's moody because happy one minute and unhappy the other. <laughs> Poor students. Four. A relative. Hey, what's wrong? I'm fed up with my brother. It seems like he's always angry at me about something. Really? Yeah. He gets upset so easily. I don't know what's the matter with him. Oh, maybe that brother is also looking for a job. Maybe that brother has a lot of things in his mind. So let's be understanding of people around us. We don't know everyone has any problems. So that brother is short-tempered. He gets mad at the sister so easily and she doesn't know what's wrong with him. Anyway, let's listen to the part one more time and to see what language is got. To four conversation. One. A boss. How do you like your new boss? She's okay. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. So what is it? I just wish she'd learn to she'd learn to lighten up a little. So what is lighten up means to take it a little easy. I just wish that she took it a little easy. Hmm? So wish sentence, wish for present, she would learn. Okay, one more time. Listen, please. Boss. She's okay. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. She'd learn to lighten up a little, to take it a little easier. What do you mean? Oh, she never enjoys a joke. She never laughs. It's hard to even get a smile out of her. Hard to get a smile out of her. Two, a co-worker. Look what Mary gave me. Isn't this a great book? Yeah, it is. Mary's so sweet. She's always giving her friends and co-workers presents. So Mary is so sweet. And she's so helpful with her time. She's helpful with her time. So she doesn't mind putting time for others. She's helpful with her time. So help someone with something. And again here, helpful with her time. Three, a teacher. What do you think of the new French teacher? Well, she's kind of strange. She's happy one minute, 
and the next minute she's not. Mm -hmm. Four, a relative. Hey, what's wrong? I'm fed up with my brother. I'm fed up with my brother. I'm fed up with my brother. So to be fed up with something, to be very mad at someone, to be really angry with someone. I'm fed up with my brother. I'm really angry with him. It seems like he's always angry at me about something. He's angry at me about something. He's angry at me about something. Really? Yeah. He gets upset so easily. He gets upset. I don't know what's the matter with him. Okay, I don't know what's the matter with him. So you got it? This was <clears throat> exercise 8, word power, talking about personality traits. We had a lot of talk here and we well developed our vocabulary reservoir. We had a lot of opportunities to speak. Okay, now if you're good, Exercise 9, perspectives, making the right choice. So people here are talking about this question. What kind of work would you like to do? Let's listen to their sample response to this question. Exercise 9, perspectives, making the right choice. And the beautiful collocation here, make a choice. Make a choice. Part A, listen to these people answer the question, what kind of work would you like to do? What job does each person talk about? Do they want that job? Well, I think I'd make a good journalist because I'm good at writing. When I was in high school, I worked as a reporter for the school website. I really enjoyed writing different kinds of articles. Okay, so probably she can make a good journalist, yeah, because she has the experience. I think I'd make a good journalist. I think I make a good journalist because I'm good at writing. When I was in high school, I worked as a reporter for, so she's got some experience doing the job. I really enjoyed writing different kinds of articles. Okay, number two. I know what I don't want to do. A lot of my friends work in the stock market, but I could never be a stockbroker because I can't make decisions quickly. I don't mind working hard, but I'm terrible under pressure. Hmm. So, working in stock market, you need to be making quick decisions. And that's what something he's not good at. Hmm? He says, I know what I don't want to be. I don't want to do. So, a lot of his friends are working in stock market. And he says, I could never be a stock broker. Why? Because I can make decisions. Make decision. Collocation. I don't mind working hard, but I'm terrible under pressure. Okay. The other one. I'm still in school. My parents want me to be a teacher, but I'm not sure yet. I guess I could be a teacher because I'm very creative. I'm also very impatient, so maybe I shouldn't work with kids. <laughs> so... A part of that, she's creative, but the other part, she's impatient. So probably being a teacher is not the option for her. Interestingly, says, my parents want me to be a teacher. I don't know. Is it a good thing for parents to decide what their children should be? It's good to give them some ideas, but final decision is on your shoulder you should decide what you want to be but simultaneously you should bear all the responsibilities for the decision you are making now you say i want to be this in the future whatever happens positive or negative that is yours be careful about it so here <clears throat> we have some speaking practice what kind of work would you like to do mm -hmm. please pause the video and answer this question my response, I aspire to work in a creative field like graphic design or writing. Why? Where I can express myself through visual or written mediums, channels, formats. 
I'm drawn to roles that allow me to use my imagination and problem solving skills. Okay, I am drawn to means I'm interested in. I aspire, I like. So that was the uh, sample response for a graphic designer or doing something in writing. What kind of job would you be good at? Why? My sample response, since I'm not graduated yet, I could excel in jobs involving customer service or language tutoring for the time being, for the time being, at this time, at the moment. I possess, I have strong communication skills and a developing proficiency in languages, which enables me or enabling me, reduced adjective clause, to effectively interact with others and assist them, help them in language learning or in learning languages. Got it? The kind of jobs that I would be good at. You also please pause the video, read the sample response and even copy it or give your own sample response. Both will be good. Okay. And we are done with this exercise. Let's move to exercise 10. And that is a very simple grammar focus. I just don't know in the first place why it is brought in this level. Sentence clauses with because. Easy. So I know that everybody knows because. So that is just an adverb clause of a reason. And it is because. Synonym for that? Since. Since it is very easy, I'm going to skip. And here it says match columns A and B together. Just take a moment, pausing the video here and matching 1 to 6 to A to F. Okay? So let's match them together. Says, I'd like to be a physical therapist. Maybe this is good because I enjoy helping people. I would make a bad librarian. I would make a bad librarian because I am very disorganized. Librarians need to be organized. I couldn't be a diplomat. So people in politics, they need mm -hmm, because I'm short tempered. I get angry so easily. A diplomat should not. They should control themselves under pressure. And I wouldn't mind working as a veterinarian veterinarian why because i love animals i could be a flight attendant because i really enjoy traveling and i could never be a financial advisor because i'm not good at managing money financial advisor managing money okay not a difficult exercise now for furthering our speaking you can pause the video here and say i could never be a someone because or I could make a good someone because or any other sample responses here I got two sample responses for you I could never be my suggestion pause the video and give your answer I could never be fluent in Mandarin because I struggle with tones and find Chinese characters challenging, difficult to memorize. However, I am determined to improve through consistent practice and immersive experiences. So consistent practice means repetitive practice and immersive experiences are for language learners to go and dive into learning. So basically they go into that environment for example they live with a family and uh, through being in constant contact with language they learn it that is called immersive language learning so this is the thing that i could never be good at what about this one i think i make a good a good what i think i make a good teacher because i'm passionate about empowering others through education empower others so give power to someone i possess strong communication skills i have i am patient or i have patience 
and creativity to engage students effectively, fostering their growth and enthusiasm for learning, developing. Foster means develop. Developing their growth and enthusiasm for learning. So qualities found in a teacher. Got it? These were my sample responses to these two questions. Please pause the video and give your own as well. And now exercise 11, writing an online cover letter for a job application. So beside your resume or your CV, you need to have a cover letter. So you're applying for this company as a teacher. You need to have a cover letter stating why you are interested in that company, why that company is selected. Again, you want to be a teacher for the other company. So your resume is the same, your cover letter changes. I would like to be working with you because of this. So resume is the same for the same job, but cover letters just change based on that company you're applying for. So the sample response here I got, <clears throat> a cover letter starting with dear hiring manager. If you know the name of the person you're writing to, also you can put it down here. I'm writing to express my keen interest in journalist position at your steamed organization. Steamed organization, very valuable, highly valuable. So the first sentence is telling you why you're writing this letter. I'm writing to express my interest in this position, in the journalist position at your steamed company. You can copy this in your cover letters. Now explanation, with a solid foundation in language learning coupled with, in addition to, a passion for storytelling. So the person has got two things, solid foundation in language learning and a passion for storytelling. I bring a unique perspective to reporting. So the person is trying to convince why my presence in your company should be an asset or valuable because I have these points with me. My proficiency in languages alongside, like coupled with, my ability to navigate cultural nuances, cultural differences, cultural ups and downs, enables me to engage diverse audiences effectively I thrive in dynamic environments. I am successful in dynamic environments, so changing environments, because working as a journalist, you need to be <clears throat> expert in changing environments, because every day something new comes up. Anyway, I thrive in dynamic environments, adept at conducting thorough research and delivering compelling narratives so because a journalist is writing you see that it is a little harder than normal people writing adept or adept means skillful skillful at conducting research doing research carrying out the research thorough research means complete research and delivering compelling narratives or stories Eager to contribute my skills to your team. I'm excited about the opportunity to bring impactful stories to light. Thank you for considering my application. And then, sincerely, Mushkan. Who is writing this cover letter? Lady Mushkan. And uh, this was a short, beautiful cover letter. You got it? Exercise 12 and the reading of the unit global work solutions. So you got the experience that people from different countries, from different cultures, from different backgrounds, when they are working together, some sorts of arguments could come up. Why? Because their outlooks on different ideas are different. Now this reading is talking about the point that American people, when working in other countries, they need to learn the culture of that place in order not in, to run into problems. Global Work Solutions, I have typed it here. Let's read and see what it is. At GW Solutions, Global Work Solutions, we recognize the importance of cross-cultural 
training for U.S. employees working abroad. Cross-cultural means between this and that. Lack of cultural understanding results in lost contracts and less business. Here are some examples of what our courses can teach you. In the USA, so US, USA with the, UK, the, Philippines, the, Netherlands, the. In the USA, with the stress on A, we say that time is money. For American workers, punctuality and timetables are always important. At work, people concentrate on the task they are doing. They usually do not spend a lot of time on small talk, on greetings, conversations, and things. However, it's important to realize that not all cultures see time in this way. Not all cultures see time in this way. In many African countries, for example, getting work done isn't the only valuable use of time. Isn't the only valuable use of time. So it is a noun, it is pronounced use, not use. If it is a verb, use. If it is a noun, use. It's not the only valuable use of time, like the good grammar that good grammar book that everybody says grammar in use. It is grammar in use. It is a noun, so grammar in use. Spending time at work to build close relationships with colleagues is equally important. Where? In some African cultures. So did you see it is close relationship? If it is a verb, close. If it is a noun, if it is an adjective, close, close relationships. It's important to ask about your colleague's personal life. Understanding these cultural differences is essential for working in a global team. If an American doesn't realize this, he or she might think that an African colleague who spends a lot of time chatting with co-workers is being lazy or avoiding doing his or her work. And an African worker might think their American colleague is the rudest person they've ever met. Why? That American co-worker never asked me about my life. <laughs> so, cultural differences. In the USA, Written agreements are essential. Business deals are always agreed through a contract. And once it's been signed, we consider it to be final. The conditions of the agreement don't usually change without the signing of another contract. Okay, But you may do business in places where this is not the case. For example, in China, for example, people generally place more trust in a person's word rather than in a signed contract. Place as a verb. Put. Place more trust. Beautiful collocation. Once a good relationship exists, a simple handshake might be enough to reach a business deal. Some years ago, it was just a handshake and people's word of mouth. Now, things have changed. In the USA, workers generally speak directly and they openly disagree with colleagues. This kind of straight talk, direct talk, is seen as a mark of honesty in an American culture. But where we see honesty, Others may see rudeness. Why this person is so direct? So it is rude in some cultures. In some parts of Asia, open disagreement with colleagues may not be acceptable because it makes people feel embarrassed. Instead, you should stop and think for a while. Afterward, you could say, I agree in general, but could a different idea work in this situation? And your body language is important too. In the West, 
direct eye contact is good because it's a sign of honesty in some asian cultures it's polite to avoid looking directly at your colleague in order to show respect yeah in some cultures men and women should not directly look at each other's face because it's not culturally acceptable anyway did you learn something new need to know more sign up for one of our training courses and learn how to do business wherever you go okay this was the reading beautiful enjoyable and uh, teaching us something and now i got a summary for this my suggestion if you want to fully implement and activate your grammar and vocabulary please read this reading two to three times pause provide a summary of that and give it i know it's difficult but no pain no gain my friends if you want to activate your grammar and vocabulary if you want to contribute your speaking this is a great way now my summary gw solutions emphasizes the significance of cross-cultural training for american employees working abroad to prevent lost contracts and businesses see how beautifully it wraps up the idea the text highlights cultural differences highlights means puts emphasis on them highlights cultural differences in perceptions of time understanding of time communication styles in business practices so this in summary the text is covering these points for instance americans prioritize punctuality and direct communication while other cultures value building relationships and indirect communication this was the first part talking about american and african views the second part understanding these differences is crucial for effective global teamwork for example in china trust in verbal agreements contrasts with the u.s reliance on reliance on relying on trust reliance on written contracts similarly different communication styles such as directness versus indirectness impact business interactions gw solutions offers training courses to enhance cultural understanding and facilitate successful international business endeavors or efforts or tries so a beautiful sample response for the summary of this reading and now some speaking my friends so part b part c please do them but in part d we got some speaking let's do that what does it say <clears throat> it says what advice would you give a foreigner coming to work in your country what advice would you give a foreigner to come and work in your country a foreigner want to come to your country to russia to germany to brazil to south korea i don't know any country from wherever you are please pause the video and give some advice this sample response is from someone from pakistan for someone coming to work in pakistan it's crucial to learn basic urdu phrases for effective communication urdu the language of pakistan understanding cultural norms such as the importance of hospitality and respect for elders fosters positive relationships embrace the diverse cuisine food and be open to trying local dishes lastly be patient and adaptable as you navigate through the unique work environment and societal dynamics so what does it have here the culture of asia the culture of the middle east it is on the emphasis is on the importance of hospitality respect for elders these are very important and building positive relationships they are very important embrace the diverse cuisines also food is important to be open to trying local dishes yeah it shows that you are a part of them lastly be patient and adaptable to 
as you navigate through the unique work environment and societal dynamics or changes. And I'll tell you something, my friends, this unit also finished. Now, and next session, we will be going to unit 11, a very useful unit, talking about the passive voice. The grammar of next session is very important for us. But what did we talk about today? Today we talked about the 21st century skills that are necessary for us to have. The list here was very important. Take a serious look at that. The conversation between the two guys. Here the grammar. Sentences for agreement and disagreement. We talked about them with lots of grammar exercises. In exercise 4, released and unreleased and that we talked about the speaking things we love to do we don't love and we don't mind here some opportunities for our speaking the listening was also beautiful with its beautiful words i will tell you in a word file word power personality traits may be one of the best exercises today talking about people's personality traits positive and negative we built up our vocabulary reservoir here Perspective, which set the scene for our grammar focus, very simple grammar focus, and uh, the writing that we took care of, cover letter, something essential these days, and the reading that we went through. And in our word file, what did we talk about, my friends, today? Here, we had a lot of chances for our speaking. For example, diverse perspective is something beautiful, a beautiful collocation for you to put in your vocabulary list foster creativity which means develop ultimately meaning finally overcome obstacles means uh, to go over problems achieve your goals it's a beautiful collocation the conversation here i talked about besides and beside okay the difference is bug you got a point means i agree with you here, grammar practice for our grammar focus today. We have a lot of sentences here. We cover the grammar point. And in listening, the difference between career and carrier. Talked about it, nine to five job, be good at something. We talked about though, which means but, make up your mind, which means decide to be stuck in traffic, to be stuck in an office list of personality traits here we had some of them were new and beautiful for you you can put that in your vocabulary list and the things that you find positive in you we thought about here we say thoughtful decisions beautiful contribute to help and here again we had cultivate these habits a beautiful collocation cultivate these habits Lighten up little means take it a little easy, helpful with her time. She doesn't mind putting time for others. I'm fed up with my brother. I am very angry. And here under perspective part, we had I'm drawn to, I am interested in. For the time being, which means right now at this time. And uh, the grammar, which was not difficult. Consistent practice is a beautiful collocation for us. Foster again means uh, develop, means grow, means cultivate. Under the writing part, here we had steamed organization, valuable organization, coupled with, which means uh, in addition to something, adept or adept, both correct, which means skillful, expert. And uh, finally, the reading, which did not have that many words for us, just place trust in something was important under summary for the reading part reliance on we had which was beautiful and in the speaking part here we have the sample response from pakistan and that's that and my final comment my friends i hope that you have enjoyed this lesson today and i hope that you find my teaching methodology useful this is the methodology based on an interactive approach so it's not a one-way lecture it is a two-way and i hope that you pause the video where i want you to and give your sample responses this way your speaking will surely improve if you find these videos useful please kindly share them with your friends show your interaction with my channel by 
liking the videos, leaving your comments, and please subscribe. All of these are important for any YouTube channel. I hope you have a brilliant day ahead of yourself. Take very good care and bye.